Chapter 11. It's only f after I lie back down on the couch at night that I realize what I've done to Ma and Dad for one thing. Ma's still awake. I can see the light in her bedroom as Dad goes on down the hall. Then I hear their voices. Not all of what they say, but enough. Ray, told you I just found out about that dog myself. Secrets from me. You and Marty, till tomorrow, I would have told you then. Every day, the mail to Judd's place mentions that dog to me. And all that time, up on my own property, me not even knowing. I bring my arms up against my ears and hold them there. So many things going wrong, it's hard to remember anything going right. Doc Murphy knows I got Judd's dog now. Dad's mad at Ma, and we still won't know till tomorrow if Shiloh's even going to make it. Worst of all, I brought Shiloh here to keep him from being hurt, and what that German Shepherd done to him was probably worse than anything Judd Travers would have brought himself to do, short of shooting him anyways. This time, when the tears come again, I don't even fight. Don't even try holding back. I must have slept through Dad's going off to work the next morning, because when I awake, Becky's standing beside me on the couch eating a piece of honey toast and breathing on my face. Dear Lynn's already told her about the dog because she asked right off, Where's it at? The doggy. I sit up and I tell her, The dog's at Doc Murphy's and we'll find out how he is this afternoon. Then I look in the kitchen at Ma. There's the set look about the lips that means trouble. That means don't mess with her because she's already in trouble with Dad. I go outside and pick me a couple of wormy peaches and sit on the stoop eating them, spitting out the wormy places. Dara Lynn comes out and sits beside me. Today she's all kindness. Judd Travers don't take care of his dog, Marty. No wonder it came up here, she says, trying to say the right thing. I can tell she's been figuring it all out from what she could overhear between Ma and Dad and anything else Ma told her. I take another bite of peach. It wasn't like you stole him, she says. That dog come up here on its own. Just hush up, Dara Lynn, I say, which I had no business saying. I didn't want to talk to anyone, that's all. Well, you could have told me I wouldn't have told anyone. Thanks, Ma says. We got to give him back to Judd Travers when he's better. I get up and start toward the hill to lean up the ground where Shiloh was attacked. See if there's any way I can put some fence wire over the top of the pen to keep out the shepherd. What's his name, Marty? Darylin calls after me. Shiloh, I tell her. I'm only halfway up the hill when I hear a car and turn around. It's Mr. Howard's car and David's in it. As soon as he sees me, he jumps out, it's still moving a little, and he comes running toward me. I get to stay here today, he yells, waving a kite he's brought with him. Everyone else is going to Parkersburg, and I didn't want to go. I look over to where Ma and Miss Howard are talking, see Ma nodding her head. I get lonely sometimes up at our house, but today I want to be with that loneliness. Don't want to talk to Dara Lynn or Becky or Dad or even Ma. If we had a telephone, I'd be calling Doc Murphy every hour. As it is, I have to wait till Dad comes home from work before I can find out about Shiloh. Can't go down there pestering Doc, him with patience to see. What do you want to do? I asked David, trying to dig up at least a little bit of enthusiasm. David and I are in the same grade, even though he's taller and heavier and looks like a junior high already. Try out this kite over in your meadow, he says. I lead him around a long way and away from Shiloh's pen, and he doesn't even notice because he's unwrapping his kite made of silk or something, which one of his relatives brought him. We stand out in the meadow flying the kite, <clears throat> and I watch the blue and yellow and green tail whipping around in the breeze. I'm a thinking about Shiloh's tail, the way it wags. You get a dog on your mind and seems to fill up the whole space. Everything you do reminds you of that dog. When we bring the kite down later, though, David sees Groundhog. Next thing you know, he's after it. Groundhog zigzagging this way and that, David yelling like crazy. 
I'm taking your cat down the house, David, I yell. I see him getting near Shadow's pen. He goes on running and yelling. I'm going to get me a handful of soda crackers. You want me to make you some peanut butter cracker sandwiches? I call out, trying to get him to follow. Then the yelling stops. Hey, he says. I know he's found a pen, and I walk over. What's this? David says. He looks at the blood on the ground. Hey, well, what happened here? I go over and yank his arm and make him sit down. He's looking at me bug-eyed. You listen to me, David Howard, I say. Whenever I say David Howard, he knows it's serious. Only did it twice in my life. Once when he sat on that paper flower pot I'd made for Ma at school. and Once when he saw me with my pants down in the bathroom. That really made me mad. But today I'm not mad. I'm serious. Something awful and terrible happened in there, David. And if you ever tell anyone, even your mom and dad, may Jesus make you blind. That's the kind of talk my folks can't stand, but I got it from Grandma Preston herself. Ma says Jesus don't go around making anyone blind, but Grandma Preston always used it as a warning, and she went to church Sunday morning and evening both. David's eyes about to pop out of his head. What? He asks again. You know, Judd Travers? <gasps> he was murdered? No, but you know the way he's mean to his dogs? He killed one of his dogs in there? No, let me tell it, David. You know how he's missing a dog? Yeah. Well, it come up here on its own and I let him stay, built him a pen and kept them a secret. Named him Shiloh. David stares at me and then at the blood in the pen and then back at me. Last night, I tell him, Baker's German Shepherd jumped the fence and tore him up. We took Shiloh to Doc Murphy and Judd don't know. David's mouth falls open and hangs there. Wow, he says. Then he says it again. I tell David how hurt Shiloh was and how we got to wait till tonight to see how he is and then we go in his pen together, and David helps me clean up the blood, pull up all the grass with blood stains on it, and throw it over the fence into the woods. It's easier somehow with David helping. With David knowing, even. If it was me by myself, I'd be thinking again and again how this never would have happened if Shiloh could have got away from that shepherd. I look at David and think we're friends for life. Then I think how there are exactly seven people now who know I have Judd Travers' dog, and it's only a matter of time before somebody lets out. Probably Becky. She'll, wall, she'll warble it to the first person coming up the lane. Did you ever notice how the more a little kid tries not to tell a secret, the sooner it gets out? Nothing that child can do about it. A secret is just too big for a little kid. What I didn't expect was that at 3.30... Before Dad come home, here's Doc Murphy's car chugging up the lane, and he's got Shiloh in the back seat. Standing out by the oak tree with David, taking turns on a bag swing, when I see the car and Shiloh's head raised up in the back seat. I'm over to that car in three seconds flat. Shiloh! No cry ever sounded so happy as the one that came out of my throat. All of us were crowding around the car. Mom, Daryl, Lynn, Becky, David, Howard, and all of us saying, Shadow, here, boy, and holding out our hands, and Shadow was trying to lick everything in sight. The patient recovered th faster than I thought he would, Doc says, getting his big belly out from behind the steering wheel, standing up. So I figured I'd bring him over myself and then to Mother. Had patients coming in and out today and didn't know what I wanted them to see that dog. <clears throat> she nodded. I'm going to pay for this, Doc Murphy, I tell him. You send the bill to Dad and he'll pay it, but I'm paying him. Well, son, that's a generous thing to do with the dog not even yours, he says. Is he all well now? No, not by a long shot. I think he's going to take a couple of weeks to heal, and I can't promise he'll walk without a limp. But I got him sewn up and full of antibiotics. If you can keep him quiet for a few days off that leg, I think he'll pull through just fine. Ma was mad at me before. She's not now. Not the way Shadow's licking all over both her arms. Getting a quick lick in at her face every time she bends close. 
Becky's sticking her hand out for Shiloh to lick, and when he does, she squeals and pulls back. Shiloh's tail going like crazy. It's like a welcome home party. Ma has me bring in this cardboard box from the shed, and we put an old pillow on the bottom of it and cover it with a clean sheet. Doc Murphy says Shiloh lays Shiloh down inside it. Shiloh seems to know he can't walk too good because as soon as he tries to stand up, he sits back down again and licks at his leg. I'm glad Shiloh's back. I'm glad he's going to get better and that he can, and that we can keep him till he's well. But the more I sit there petting his head, feeling his happiness, the more I know I can't give him up. I won't.